In this video, we'll take a look at the ways American and Indian films portray schizophrenia and dissociative identity disorder, and briefly discuss how these portrayals impact those with the disorders. Schizophrenia is a heavily misunderstood chronic mental disorder that can cause symptoms such as delusions, hallucinations, and cognitive difficulties. Dissociative identity disorder, DID for short and previously known as multiple personality disorder, is most often caused by childhood trauma and involves a person having two or more identities or alters. So why should we consider the media portrayals of these two disorders? Although DID is perhaps even more misunderstood than schizophrenia, people with either disorder are often believed to be frightening and dangerous a perception encouraged and even constructed by media portrayals, and one that ultimately causes significant harm to schizophrenic and DID patients. So then, why consider the representation in American and Indian cinema, or Hollywood and Bollywood, in particular? Well, both industries have enormous popularity outside of their home countries, which means that their films, and therefore the way they portray mental illness in their films, impact millions around the world. One common and harmful film portrayal of people with DID and schizophrenia is that of the violent homicidal maniac, first introduced through Norman Bates' character with DID in the famous Hollywood film Psycho and repeated in horror movies since. The homicidal maniac is not just a killer. He or she is also demented, often getting personal by using a knife and reveling in their violence. Their victims are almost always innocents, and often people who are trying to help them. And most importantly, their reason for killing is directly related to their disorder, such as in the Bollywood film Bhul Bulaya, in which a woman's dissociative identity disorder makes her want to murder her husband, and in Split, where a man with 23 personalities has a secret, deadly 24th, the Beast, an inhuman creature that ultimately kills two young girls and the man's own therapist. This formula continues in The Visit, where two schizophrenic patients who escaped a nearby mental hospital pose as two teenagers' grandparents after murdering their real grandparents and a concerned citizen, and attempt to kill the kids at the end of their visit. This portrayal is also seen in drama films, such as the Bollywood film Will Lamhe about the life of a schizophrenic actress, although it's framed more as tragic violence than evil. But most often, the violent homicidal maniac is a sinister character with evil intentions, teaching the audience to fear people with DID and schizophrenia. Another harmful portrayal seen in both Bollywood and Hollywood movies is the schizophrenic or DID patient as inhuman and demonic, often capable of extraordinary feats of strength and exhibiting twisted facial expressions, deep and frightening voices, and animalistic movements connoting demonic possession. Some films depict patients as literally inhuman, such as The Beast in Split. Depicting patients with these disorders as inhuman is alarming, as history has taught us that viewing a subset of people as inhuman leads to discrimination, mistreatment, and even mass murder. Although all of the previous depictions are psychiatrically inaccurate, inaccuracy while discussing the disorders themselves usually through a psychiatrist character like in Psycho, is especially damaging because audiences are more likely to trust a psychiatrist, even if they know he or she is an actor. He tried to be his mother. And uh, now he is. Just like in Psycho, the psychiatrist in Bul Bulaya diagnoses and describes Avni's DID incorrectly, as it is most often developed through trauma in childhood as a way to cope and not simply through guilt or deeply sympathizing with another's plight. Although Split correctly portrays the main character's development of DID, his psychiatrist's insistence that DID patients have supernatural powers brings us back to the alarming inhuman portrayal. There have, in fact, been brain scans proving that DID patients' brains function differently than the average brain, but they are not able to change their bodies, only their mental perceptions of them. We have brain scans now. DID patients have changed their body chemistry with their thoughts. Another psychiatrically inaccurate portrayal is that of the paranormal cure, seen in Avni's treatment to rid her of her altar, which plays out less like a psychiatric treatment and more like an exorcism. 
उन्हीं के शरीर को हमेशा के लिए छोड़ देगी In Diwangi, the villainous Tehran has tricked his lawyer and the jury into believing he has DID to get off after being charged with a brutal murder. Since DID is still steeped in controversy over its existence, even within the psychiatric community, this portrayal is detrimental to DID patients by encouraging the common belief that they're faking their disorder. Split personality. Where did he come from? Not all media representations of schizophrenia and DID are harmful. Some are progressive or subversive, challenging the dominant portrayals by presenting a different perspective. One such film is 15 Park Avenue, which follows a woman with schizophrenia, Miti, who has delusions that her imaginary husband and children are waiting for her at the non-existent 15 Park Avenue in Kolkata. 15 Park Avenue depicts a sympathetic and realistic view of Meetis and her family's struggles with her illness for most of the film, but has a surrealist ending in which Meetis is reunited with her family at 15 Park Avenue and never seen again. <laughs> Hello, children! <laughs> Miti. This open-ended climax not only forces us to question what is reality and what is fiction, a struggle that schizophrenics deal with daily, but also serves as a metaphor for the possibility of a fulfilling life with schizophrenia. A Beautiful Mind, the Academy Award-winning Hollywood film loosely based on the life of the famous economist John Nash, also does this well by presenting characters and plots as reality for a large part of the film, and then later revealing them as Nash's hallucinations. Now, pizza, I have enormous respect for. And of course, beer. The viewer gets attached to his lovably kooky roommate, and we therefore feel a fraction of John's pain and confusion when he's exposed as a delusion. You lying son of a bitch! Who are you talking to? Tell me who you see. How do you say Charles Herman in Russian? There's no one there, John. There's no one there. The film rather realistically portrays the struggles of schizophrenia, such as the difficulties solving problems that once came easy to him, connecting with his child, and being intimate with his wife. But just like in Park Avenue, it ends on a high note to counter stereotypes and stress that great achievement is possible with schizophrenia. Bollywood psychological thriller Kartik Calling Kartik, in which a depressed man gets a call every morning from himself, is not without its problems. For one, it mixes up schizophrenia with DID and also ultimately frames the alternate Kartik as a villain. However, overall the film portrays Kartik himself and his battle with the disorder sympathetically and encourages regular psychiatric treatment and therapy. It ends both realistically and hopefully, demonstrating the fact that schizophrenia is chronic but treatable. His girlfriend reads more about his disorder, he speaks to his therapist, and we see happy images of the life they're building together. Huh. Lastly, the 1975 film Sybil, which is based off the life of a woman with 16 personalities, or identities, does not villainize Sybil or portray her as dangerous, rather depicts her compassionately as a woman struggling to address her severe childhood trauma in therapy. Once I woke up and I was two years older, and it was very hard for me to get through college. I want very much to be a teacher. I want to give something to somebody. You understand that? Sure. The film also ends happily with Sybil embracing her alter, Peggy, and achieving her lifelong dream of becoming a teacher. It's all right, sweetie. It's all right. It's all In accepting right. Peggy into her arms, Sybil began the deepest healing of herself. Today, Sybil lives peacefully in a small college town where she's a professor of art. 
Although positive, subversive portrayals such as these are welcome, the unfortunate reality is that they are the minority, while negative portrayals are far more common and powerful. Due to the worldwide popularity of both Bollywood and Hollywood, harmful and inaccurate portrayals of schizophrenia and DID, like those we've examined, increase the stigma against people suffering from the disorders across the world. This increase in stigma puts even more obstacles in the lives of people living with the disorders, such as additional discrimination that blocks integration into society, self-stigma that hampers treatment, increased risk of suicide, and overall lower quality of life. But through mental illness education, push for positive portrayals, and critical reading of harmful ones, we as viewers can advocate for and enact positive change in these industries. And perhaps, by doing so, combat the stigma against mental illness.